Have you ever wanted to plunge the galaxy into darkness, despair, and the laughter of thirsting gods? Well, maybe you should join the Chaos Space Marines. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Chaos Space Marines, and in particular which Chaos Legion to play as when you're playing Warhammer 40k. As with quite a lot of armies out there, there's really quite a choice, and it can be quite a big decision for a new hobbyist, seeing as it not only influences your paint scheme, but also how the models play in-game. Some of them, such as the Death Guard and Thousand Sons, are really quite divergent to the core Chaos Space Marines, so in this video we'll try and shed a little bit of light into the darkness, go through every single Chaos Legion and some major warbands, talk about who they are, what they do, and roughly how they tend to play in-game. So let's start with the first among traitors, the Black Legion. These guys are some of the archetypical bad guys of all of 40k, and perhaps one of the single most important threats in the lore. They were formerly known as the Lunar Wolves, then the Sons of Horus, and after Horus was finally slain by the Emperor, they painted their armour black as a sign of mourning. These Black Crusaders are the bitter veterans of millennia, and they've been patiently biding their time until they can make the Imperium fall once and for all. They tend to be perhaps a little bit more unified than some of the other Chaos Legions, Abaddon the Despoiler will marshal them and many other legions forth in Black Crusades from the Eye of Terror, the last of which overwhelmed the Cadian Gate, broke forth the barrier that once contained the Howling Eye of Terror Warp Storm, and split the very galaxy in two, unleashing the Cicatrix Maledictum. Black Legion followers of all the Chaos Gods can be found, they're generally undivided, and not dedicated to one Chaos God over any other. They can employ a wide variety of tactics when making war, though perhaps some of their most archetypical units are their standard Chaos Space Marines and Bringers of Despair Terminators. They do have a couple of fairly recent unique miniatures in Warhammer 40k, there's Abaddon the Despoiler himself, perhaps the single greatest enemy of the Imperium, and the Raptor character Harkon Worldclaimer, who famously plants his spear into worlds to claim them for the Legion. In game they do tend to favour fairly balanced tactics, their Legion trait as it stands allows them to advance and still fire, and their forces on the table will often tend to band around Abaddon and a core of Terminators, making a brutal push towards the enemy to tear out their throat. I'd say compared with the rest of the Chaos Legions, they're somewhat moderate in strength. Probably the biggest draw to the faction is Abaddon himself, though of course with the strength of any factions in Warhammer 40k, I would bear in mind that it can change drastically whenever a new codex is released. Chaos Space Marines will certainly be due a major shake-up when their 9th edition codex drops and a bunch of their units gain an extra wound. Overall though, if you want to play one of the main arch enemies of 40k, Black Legion might be for you. They're one of the few forces that really looks like they might have a chance of bringing down the Imperium itself. Next up we have the Twisted Slanesh Worshippers of the Emperor's Children. When they were once loyal to the Emperor, they were proud and striving for martial perfection, relentlessly drilling their soldiers and disdainful in the extreme of their peers. Since their legions fall to the god of depravity and excess, they maintain the streak of pride, while also craving every sensation and excess that battle has to offer, often augmenting their already keen senses to superhuman highs, and reveling in the agony and misery that they can inflict on their enemies. Their Primarch Fulgrim has been missing in action for quite some time, though there are heavy hints that he has become some sort of sinister snake-like demon prince, and the Emperor's Children do seem like a reasonable candidate that Games Workshop could redo in a similar style to the Death Guard and Thousand Sons. Currently their unique miniatures are really quite old, Noise Marines are certainly in need of an update, and Lucius the Eternal, with his disturbing backstory of whoever kills him will slowly and painfully transform into him, is also in a bit of a need of an update. Currently though, they're one of the stronger Chaos Space Marines in-game. Their Legion traits will allow them to strike first with extraordinary martial prowess, and you'll often find them in big units of Noise Marines or Obliterators, double shooting with endless cacophony, and boosted by the Slanesh Discipline spell of Delightful Agonies. If you want to play as some of the most twisted and depraved of the Chaos Space Marines, then the Emperor's Children might be for you. Next up we come to the Iron Warriors, a legion of grim siege experts given to heavy weapons, cybernetic augmentation, and heavy artillery bombardment before charging in to break the enemy's defences. Their Primarch Perturabo and the legion itself has a bitter rivalry with the Imperial Fist Space Marines, and they like nothing more than knocking down the sandcastle fortifications that the Imperial Fists build. Perhaps one of their greatest and most bloody victories was at the Iron Cage, daring the proud Rogal Dawn to assail their fortifications before springing an ambush and obliterating a large portion of the Imperial Fist Legion in an absolute massacre that would have continued to the end if it hadn't been for the irritating intervention of Gilliman and his Ultramarines. In terms of Chaos Deities, they don't favour one more than another, worship the undivided Chaos Pantheon, and I think that their colour scheme is particularly inspiring. Metal and Brass 
broken up by their characteristic hazard stripes. They don't have a ton of unique miniatures from Games Workshop, aside from the Forge World upgrades and kits that all the Chaos have for 30k, the Iron Warriors only really have the one unique Warsmith from Games Workshop itself. In terms of their performance in-game, they're a largely shooting-related legion. All of the troops will ignore cover, very fitting for a siege legion, and they have quite a lot of synergy with demon engines and vehicle-focused tactics. I would perhaps say compared with the rest, they don't tend to be as competitive as some other options, but they can be really quite a good choice for really big demon engines, things like Lords of Skulls, who can gain quite a lot of power from the Iron Warriors Legion. Overall, if you like a grim and determined advance, punishing the enemy with heavy weapons before closing in for the kill, the Iron Warriors might be for you. Now we come to the Blood Mad Berserkers that are the World Eaters. Even before their fall to chaos, the World Eaters had anger management issues. The cybernetic upgrades that Angron implanted in the skulls of his legion lead to unnatural strength and agility, but come at the expense of an all-consuming berserker rage. After siding with the Warbaster, it was hardly too surprising that they succumbed to the will of Khorne, and now they're rightly feared as some of the most murderous and dangerous shock troops in the entire galaxy. In terms of their unique miniatures, Khan the Betrayer got a nice new re-sculpt in relatively recent times, though I must admit that the old plastic berserker kit is looking really quite dated, and is definitely due an update. As with the Emperor's Children, there's at least a reasonable chance that Games Workshop might release World Eaters as their own codex somewhere down the line. I'm sure new reimagined Berserkers, Terminators, and Angron himself would go down really well. Playstyle-wise, the World Eaters aren't a particularly complicated lot. They're essentially your high-progressive melee chapter. When they charge into the enemy, they get an extra attack on the charge, and have a bunch of stratagems, warlords, and relics that only serve to make them fattier. They're certainly fun to play both with and against, but might be slightly weaker than some of the other options in-game, just because they are really quite focused on the one strategy, and I think they'd certainly be better if units like Corn Berserkers were a little bit more points efficient. After their options though, I think their Red Butcher Terminator squads are really quite interesting. You can get some exceptionally hard-hitting Terminators for a little bit of command point investment over the standard pattern. Overall though, if you want a simple murder force that charges towards your enemy, intent on shedding their blood and taking their skulls for the skull throne, the World Eaters might just be for you. Moving on, we have the Dark Prophets of the Chaos Pantheon in the Word Bearers. Lorgar and his legion formerly worshipped the Emperor, but when this praise was rebuffed, he discovered there were bigger and more powerful entities out there, and he realised the true potential of the Chaos Gods and how they deserved worshipping above humanity. They sowed the very seeds for the Horus Heresy, and now they are evangelical preachers, attempting to sway the masters of the Imperium against the Emperor's light. Many of their warriors will have black text engraved into their armour or their very skin as a sign of their dedication to the Chaos Pantheon. When they make war, they have many demon kin and possessed units, unholy fusions between a mortal demon and superhuman soldier, and their sorcerers are renowned as great summoners of Chaos Demons. Again, these guys are followers of Chaos Undivided, not showing any preference for one god, but instead worshipping the Pantheon as a whole. I believe at present the word bearers don't have any official miniatures from Games Workshop for 40k, though as with the other legions they do have plenty of unique things from Forge World for 30k. They've got plenty of very fluffy choices that you can get from Games Workshop though, such as Masters of Possession, Possessed, Greater Possessed, and all other manner of demon concoctions. Typically their playstyle will revolve around these units, there aren't really any other armies that can take Possessed into such a level of lethalness that the word bearers can, They've got several warlord traits and stratagems that directly impact anything that's a fusion of demon and space marine. As famed black preachers as well, their dark apostles are also better than any other legion. Strength-wise, I'd say they're fairly moderate at the moment. They certainly can work, and I believe they've done well in some tournaments in ninth. They are kind of directly proportionate to how good possessed are at the moment though, as their actual base legion trait isn't anything to particularly write home about. Next up, we come to the followers of Zinch in the Thousand Sons. The Legion always had a great number of psychers, and Magnus led them in a ceaseless quest for forbidden lore. Unfortunately for them, Zinch took a very great interest in them, gradually bestowing them with more and more gifts and mutations, until they were beginning to devolve from all form of what they used to be. The sorcerer Araman rather brutally fixed this problem, by reducing every single Thousand Sun space marine that wasn't a psyker to dust. Now the true members of the Legion are only really the Psychers, and they lead clanking squads of hollow armour automata into battle, much to the Legion being a literal shadow of its former self. Now as fully-fledged servants of Zinch, they often make law to fight for forbidden law, or conduct fell rituals to allow untold demons into the mortal planes. They have a particular hatred for the Space Wolves chapter, who sacked Prospero their homeworld during the Horus Heresy on the Emperor's orders. 
Despite this, quite a lot of people maintain that Magnus did nothing wrong. In terms of unique miniatures, the Thousand Sons are blessed with quite a lot. Games Workshop properly fleshed them out into their own codex, giving them unique rubric marines, new sorcerers and Araman, the Primark Magnus, Scarab Occult Terminators, and Zangors, which share their miniatures with Age of Sigma. Being separated into their own codex does have positives and negatives, though. They do have a lot of their own unique miniatures compared with other factions, though it does mean that they're locked out of quite a lot of the Chaos range. They can't use certain squads such as Havocs or Raptors. Playstyle-wise, nearly every single unit in the Codex is a Psyker. It means that they can put out a fair amount of damage with mortal wounds, and much of their game it revolves around Psychic trickery, redeploying units, or making some unusually durable or hard-hitting. In general, they tend to be fairly slow and resilient, with their clanking automata slowly marching up the board, inevitable as death. Sadly, as a pure army, I would say that they're one of the weaker factions in the game right now. They do have a bunch of nifty tricks, and Magnus himself is a really powerful piece on the table, but they just don't have a really very fleshed out codex, and work a lot better if they're used as allies. I'm sure their time will come again once more in time. Overall though, if you like crafty scheming, playing mind games with your opponent before obliterating them with lightning, then the Thousand Suns might well be for you. I must say, I do find their rubric marines really quite striking. They've got a pretty awesome Egyptian-inspired colour scheme going on. Next we have the Insidious Alpha Legion. They are perhaps one of the most mysterious of the Emperor's Legions, experts at covert operations, fermenting unrest in planetary populations, and are pretty much impossible to ever truly defeat, as when you strike off one head of the Hydra, there's another one just waiting in its place, likely that one also claiming to be Alpharius. Their Primarchs are some of those with the least documentation as to what's happened in their lives. Alpharius and Omegon, thought to be twin Primarchs, and also believed to be both dead, though honestly who really knows with the Alpha Legion. I'm afraid they might be one of the lesser supported legions by Games Workshop. Some very cool background, but they don't have any unique miniatures for Warhammer 40k that I'm aware of. Playstyle wise, I think they're one of the stronger Chaos Legions. Their Legion trait is quite handy at minus one to hit at range, but their strength really lies in their insane number of very powerful stratagems. They can intercept enemy units when they come in, redeploy pre-game, move pre-game into the midfield to take up perfect positions, make enemy vehicles near auto explode when they kill them, and stop their own units being shot down even when they're in plain sight. In general, perhaps their emphasis is a little bit more on ranged combat than melee combat compared with some space marines, though they can do both. Certainly quite a fun faction to play, they've got a really nice colour scheme I think, and they can be quite a frustrating one to play against. If you'd like to never fight a fair fight, and manipulate and bring down your foes through guile and trickery, then the Alpha Legion may be for you. Next we come to the Disease Legion of the Death Guard. Famed for having indomitable, resilient battle lines in the Great Crusade, the Death Guard only became more resilient and harder to kill when Mortarion made his pact with Nurgle, consigning his legion into a permanent state of near death. Their bloated and diseased bodies being far harder to kill than any normal space marine. Death Guard will slowly and remorselessly advance, laying down remorseless volleys of bolt of fire and getting to work on their opponents with disturbing plague weapons, where the merest scratch can lead to a messy and painful death. Miniatures wise, these guys again have their own codex, and perhaps have the most unique miniatures of any of the legions of 40k, getting loads of support when they were the primary antagonists of 8th edition. They have their own postulant and rotting sculpts of plague marines, Terminators, Poxwalker Zombies, three different unique demon engines to spread their blight and pestilence, several unique characters, and their own fortification. Again, they can't use all that much of the Chaos Ranger besides what's in their unique codex. There are just a few exceptions, things like Possessed and Chaos Lords, but it's less of a blow to them than the Thousand Sons, as they have just more options to begin with. In game, when I've recorded this, they've just got a shiny new codex, and it is looking very strong at first glance. It's very hard to kill some of their units efficiently, things like Terminators in particular. They're all toughness 5, have 3 wounds and minus 1 damage, and they'll likely be able to laugh off most enemy firepower, grinding them down with bolt of fire and plague weapons in a gruelling war of attrition. Mortarion himself is also an absolute beast. He'll kill near enough anything, spread the contagions of Nurgle far and wide, and will take a very solid amount of firepower if you want to bring him down. If you like to lay your enemies low with pestilent disease weapons while shrugging off enemy firepower like it's nothing, then the Death Guard might just be for you. Next up, we come to the Dark Angels, much like the Alpha Legion, a secretive and unclear force of Space Marines, and have managed to pull the wall over the eyes of much of the Imperium. Actually, sorry about that, I hear they are loyalists. I have absolutely no idea how the Honourable Dark Angels Legion managed to wind up in this review of Chaos Space Marine Legions. 
Next we have the Night Lords, the Chaos Space Marines that you want to collect if you want to have an entire army of savage murderers striking forth from the shadows and dragging their enemies away. Their Primarch Conrad Kurz had a bit of an unhappy childhood and wound up trying to clean up his neighbourhood by savagely murdering anyone who bought a toe out of line. No one's going to be doing any crimes if they're too scared to venture out of the house. The Night Lords are perhaps most famed for their terror tactics in battle, striking from the darkness adorned with all manner of skulls and flayed skin, their dark armour crackling with sinister jets of lightning. Their every move is designed to break the will of the enemy, driving all before them in chaos and despair. Models-wise, they don't have all that much unique stuff going on. From Games Workshop, there's just one quite old Chaos Lord sculpt with some nice bat wings on this helmet. Though again, much of the 30k lineup from Forge World is far more impressive if you do want some dedicated Night Lord things. You can see a few of their miniatures on the right. In game, in Warhammer 40k, they really focus very heavily on the leadership debuffs, as you might expect. Perhaps Raptors and Warp Talons are some of their most iconic units, jumping in from nowhere to try and cut the enemies to bits. It's worth noting that they have really quite a powerful stratagem called Vox Scream as well, which can really put a dent in your opponent's command synergies as their captains and troopers are deafened for a bit by some mad cackling over the Vox waves. Strength-wise, I'd say they're fairly moderate. Leadership debuffs often tend to have problems in 40k. A lot of factions just don't really care about them all that much. And it's more things like Vox Scream and their other unique relics and traits and things that really sell them as an army. Next we come to the Dark Angels that we are allowed to talk about in this review, and they're the ones who have unquestionably gone bad, known as the Fallen. When the Crusading Dark Angels returned to their homeworld of Caliban after the Horus Heresy, it was revealed that their brother marines who remained at home had fallen to the sway of Chaos under their second-in-command Luther. Furious with outrage, the Dark Angels bombed their homeworld into non-existence, the Lion himself besting Luther in single combat though the vast majority of the fallen forces on Caliban seem to have been plucked away by the demon entities of the warp, and then very unhelpfully for the Dark Angels scattered through space and time. Despite the Dark Angels' best efforts to try and isolate and neutralise every single one of these fallen, it is said that they're massing somewhere out there in the galaxy, and now Luther himself has slipped his bonds on the fortress monastery of the Rock, so at some point I'm sure we could expect to see more from them. In terms of 40k miniatures, a lot of people like to convert fallen from the Dark Angels' veteran kit, that one mixed up with some Chaos Space Marine parts is pretty much ideal. They also have the mysterious individual known as Cypher, with his dual wield bolt pistol and plasma pistol, who springs up multiple times over the galaxy, seeming to help and hinder the Imperium in equal measure. Technically, their rules for 40k are pretty lackluster, they only really have the one data sheet of veterans and Cypher himself, so if you wanted to play an entire army of Fallen, you could either have the choice of running them as Chaos Space Marines, or using the rules for Dark Angels. As per their actual rules and datasheet, they really aren't very strong and are borderline unplayable as a faction, unless you wanted to use them as a small choice of fluffy allies. So if we leave the actual legions of the Chaos Space Marines behind, there are also quite a lot of warbands that have sprung up over the years. These can be offshoots of legions, or various chapters of loyalist Chaos Space Marines who have fallen to the predations of the Dark Gods since the Horus Heresy. One of the most notable, led by their swanky new miniature, are the creations of Bile, representing Fabius Bile's depraved experiments trying to make the ideal space marine. They're basically a bunch of roided out Chaos Space Marines who are extra strong and extra tough, and they have a reasonable sized supplement that you can run an army of them as from the Psychic Awakening supplement book, War of the Spider. Other options include Huron Blackheart and his traitors from the Badab War, the Red Corsairs, fallen space marines from all manner of different backgrounds, all fighting under one traitorous banner. There are many, many others out there though, such as the Brazen Beasts, the Nurgle Worshipping Purge who want to destroy all life, the Crimson Slaughter who featured in the Dark Vengeance box set from ages past, the Scourged and the Flawless Host. All of these have a little bit of rules associated with them, nowhere near as much as the actual Chaos Legions, but basically their own chapter tactic, stratagem, warlord trait and relic. In terms of army strength, I've certainly seen people run things like Red Corsairs, the Purge and the Flawless Host. Red Corsairs can give you a bunch more command points, the Purge have a pretty great Legion trait that allows them to hit a bit better at range, and the Flawless Host can be really powerful melee combatants. Of course, there's absolutely nothing to stop you from making your own Chaos Warband of one sort or another. Pick a colour scheme, make some awesome backstory, and just run them under the rules of one of these things that we've talked about in the video. So, hope you've enjoyed a brief run through the various different Chaos Legions for Warhammer 40k. Feel free to let me know your thoughts, or any other expansion as to why you should play any one Legion over any of the others. As always, I'll certainly look forward to having a read of your comments.
If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Auspets Tactics. We'll certainly be keeping more videos coming, with new 40k stuff coming out pretty much every day. Finally, if you have been finding the videos on the channel useful at all, I would just like to mention that the channel has a Patreon page, which is how I can spend quite so much time making videos about model soldiers. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, such as seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next, and automatic entry to the channel's prize giveaways, with some very big model kits to be worn each and every month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.